so we're going to do the neuron. All right? Neuron, it comes from the, uh, if you remember, we talked about the neurology and, your, and stuff. It comes from the Latin, nervous, meaning nerve. So remember when we did the brain, what did I have you write up here? Brain plus what equals what? Does anyone remember? The central nervous system. Brain plus what equals the central nervous system? Brain plus spinal cord equals the central nervous system. Very good. Okay, yeah. Brain plus spinal cord is the central nervous system, and once it exits the spinal cord, it's called the peripheral nervous system. We're going to be doing a neuron, which is a nerve. Yes? Is there anything wrong with this one? There is a, there is a tweak, but it's not wrong. Okay? All right, so you guys have your, um, your diagrams to look at. It's page what? 151. 151. And this one is going to be relatively simple. Um, we're not going to do any underdrawings for this. It's that simple. However, I'm going to suggest that you get your colored pencils out anyway because we're going to be talking about the different parts of a nerve. So the colors I will be using will be blue for the soma body, red for the dendrites, purple for the um, axon, and green for the, for the Schwann cells because we're going to color code this. You may use whatever colors you choose. Yep, you like having lots of colors to choose from. Okay. I tweaked your colors a little. Thank you. All right, so starting with light blue, well, actually starting with our title. Okay, this is a neuron. Oh, uh, Wait, you said 151, right? Uh, this is on 142, yes. Do you want our paper landscape or parallel? I mean, we're going to do it portrait, so that works for me. So, neuron and I'm doing neuromuscular. Junction. Now, that big word, what is that? Neuromuscular, what does that sound like? Muscles. Muscles? So we have nerve and muscle, and what's a junction? Does anyone know what that word means? If we have a junction of two train tracks, what does that mean? Connect. It connects. So this is the neuron and muscular junction is where a neuron connects to your muscles. Mm -hmm. Now, the diagram doesn't say it, but just so you're aware, the specific neuron we're doing is from the peripheral neural system. I probably spelled that wrong. Correct her if she does. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> R B P N S. So I'm going to start with the nerve body. It's called a soma, a nerve so, um, cell soma, and soma means body. So you're going to take whatever color you want for your your cell. And you're going to make kind of this spiky star-like thing. It can have as many outcroppings. It looks like a Jewish star. Yep, kind of. Or a Shira's badge. Okay. It can have as many outcroppings as you like, but each of these outcroppings are going to turn into a dendrite or an axon. So be careful. If you put 32 of them on there, you're going to be here a while. Okay? And then inside that, we're going to put a nucleus. Remember, we label at the end. So far, so good? All right. Moving on to whatever color you want your dendrite to be, all but one of these, and I would suggest it be this one, but it could be this one anywhere you can have a long one. All but one is going to be the axon. So pick where you're going to put your axon, and your axon is going to need some space. So because here, I would pick one of these two to be my axon. All the other ones, I want you to outline and go up to the top and make like little trees. See like that? There. So dendrite. Dendrite is from the Greek pertaining to a tree, or dendron, meaning tree. So can we see why a dendrite, I, little, little tree. Okay. 
Now, how are we doing? You need me to pause for a sec? Okay. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. All right, I want you to pick whatever color you're going to use for your axon. The axon is different from the dendrites. So, you're going to start here and you're going to make a tail. And then, because we're going to wrap Schwann cells around it, I want you to dot the axon. And then, when you get out here, you're going to make another tree like thing. All right? And then at the end of each branch of your axon's tree, you're going to put a knob. So far, so good? So we have cell body, dendrites, axon, and then the axon tree out here. Now for my favorite part. Now this does not have to be perfect because we're just doing this because the Schwann cells are going to wrap around the axon. So this dotted line indicates something is either behind or in the middle of another structure because the axon does go through the Schwann cells. And I'm actually going to show you a really kind of neat candy-based demonstration of how a Schwann cell works. I just got your attention, didn't I? <laughs> now come on. <laughs> so you can and you get closer if you add a couple more off the way. Oh yeah, 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 sure. It's gonna go too fast. I have to make sure you tell her no okay. Like I have to do all this. Yeah. All this way. If you if wow. you're behind in the drawing, then you're not gonna get the same information is about hmm? if you're drawing this, you're gonna be talking about this, you're gonna center. miss stuff. Okay. Well, it just basically trees out. So this is like the trunk right here. And then it trees out from this point. There you go. Does that make sense? Not all along That's here. So you scroll down. That's very, very okay. Done. okay, to make Schwann cells. So this is kind of neat. Um, some nerves are what's called myelinated. And myelinated is a fancy word for essentially in insulation. Uh, if you've ever seen a electrical wire, it's got that that plastic rubbery wrap around it. So like if you cut a wire, it's got copper on the inside, but we can touch it because it's got that multicolored wrap on it. It's insulation. insulation. So you're going to put three or four what's called Schwann cells, and they look like jelly beans. And they cannot touch. They have to have these, these gaps. And you want the gaps to be almost equal. So they have to be almost evenly spaced. So these are called Schwann cells. Well, now, and then on the top of the Schwann cell, you're going to put this little tiny thing. This is the Schwann cell nucleus. And this is where I'm going to show you kind of how this works. Imagine this is an axon. Okay, so I've got one of these licorice things you can pull apart. And I've got this sort of thing. When a Schwann cell works, is it will wrap around the axon like this. Around. And we're going to build these and around, and around, and it will wrap. So if you cut one of these in half, you will find a spiral. And all of the, all of the Schwann cells work, its organelles are right there close to the surface. So it's, come here. 
So its nucleus is like taking this candy and wrapping it right here at the end, right around and locking it in. And there you go, a Schwann cell on a neuron with a nucleus. And then the end of the axon actually peels apart to little trees like this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna build these and when we do, you guys will be able to make two or three Schwann cells just like that. And that's exactly how they work. Okay? So you guys looking forward to that? Mm -hmm. Okay. In between these, remember I said they had to have gaps. These gaps are called the nodes of Ron VA. Can you say that? Nodes of Ron VA. Okay, so Schwann cells and Ron nodes of Ron VA. That doesn't sound Latin or Greek, does it? No. And that's because actually named for their discoverers. Schwann cells are named for where'd you go? Schwann, Schwann cells are named for German physis, German um, physiologist Theodor Schwann, who lived from 1810 to 1882. Schwann. And the nodes of Ron VA were named for Antoine Ron VA, 1835 to 1922. So we have these and this, and this is a neuron. Not too bad, right? Okay, now we're going to make a you know an, a blow-up type thing. So I want you to box or circle one of the nodes here at the end of the axon, and then make this, and this. Mm -hmm. Is making an inset. So we're going to look at the synaptic knob. It's going to come in like this and make kind of a like that. Okay? And then I suppose I'm going to cheat muscle being reddish. The muscle will actually come in. Go around and come up, but they cannot touch. That gap is called a cleft. Now, one of the cool things about neurons is we think of them being like electric, and they are, but they're also chemical. So, we have these things called acetylcholine sacs. So, you're going to make little bubbles. Kind of looks like a, a flask with a bubbling solution from a chemistry class, doesn't it? Okay, and there's these little um, receptors here in the muscle, but we're not going to really get into those. That's for you guys to kind of research. And that is going to be our full drawing. So once we have the drawing done, now what do we do? Label. We label. Now, one of the things that's not on your diagram, but I want to put in, is... I asked myself, what's the difference between a dendron and an axon? And I found out the answer. The answer is how the information moves. So I want you to make an arrow like this. Okay? So the information comes down the dendrites and allowed out through the axons. And that's the difference. Does the arrow need to be on top of the drawing? It can go anywhere. Okay. So. <laughs> goes down the dendrites. And allowed out. The axon. So that's how the information moves. Now let's label this sucker. Well, I don't think because you better write that down. just so long as they remember it, but since this is their first thing, probably a good idea to write it down this time. You don't necessarily have to write it down every time we practice in the next two weeks.
we can get some help if we need to. Because we're going to build these cells, we need a little bit of time. So you can see here, a single nerve cell, a neuron, can collect information from multiple other neurons. And, but it will all go out the same path, but then it can touch lots of other neurons this way. And one of the coolest things about these Schwann cells is if you don't have Schwann cell myelinating your axon, the information will travel fast, but it will speed up almost tenfold, I think it was, going through, an act, going through Schwann cells. Because the information, instead of traveling the whole length, will actually go hop, 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 hop out. So it'll actually speed up if you have Schwann cells. Did you underline, is it color coded? The dendrites is mm -hmm. red for intentionally? Yep. So down, information goes down the dendrites and allowed out through the axons. Okay. This is one of the differences from your uh, diagram. They point out this and this little thing as a dendrite. That's not wrong, but all of these structures are dendrites, so I just prefer that we label two of the larger structure as dendrites. Okay. Now, I just had to add one extra line. I already planned out where my things are going to be labeled. Good. Okay. Well, most of them. We're going to make an encompassing label here, because this is the cell body. Okay? Or cell soma. And inside the cell soma, we have two things. We have the nucleus and we have Cytoplasm. So nucleus comes from the Latin word meaning kernel or nut. And it kind of looks like a hard nut right there in the middle, doesn't it? And then cytoplasm. Every time you see the word cyto, they're talking about a cell. That's Latin essentially for cell. And plasm means basically we get a word plastic, moldable, squishable. So this is, uh, this is the mm -hmm. stuff that's filling up the, side, the cell mm -hmm. that's squishy. Mm -hmm. So. So the thing. To represent that, I got gummies, cytoplasm. And then the nucleus, to get that, I got little hard candies. Just like you saw me make on the axon. Okay. So far, so good? Yeah. Okay, so the axon is here. A-X-O-N. This means the axon, sorry. Axon, from the Greek, meaning axis. So just like we have an axis through the earth, this word axon comes from that same root. Mom says you don't want your own things. You don't have to draw what I'm drawing right now. I'm just putting this up to show you something. Right. But you don't have to worry about these. See, I'm going to pop in those, the red things. Yeah. OK, are we all set? Yeah. Again, don't worry what I'm drawing down here. I'm going to talk about it, but you don't have to draw it. OK, so these, what were these? Do you remember? Right, Schwann cells. Schwann. Good. And riding on top of the Schwann cell is what? The nucleus. Right. Oh, that's the nucleus on the slideshow. Uh huh. Slideshow, isn't it? Yep. 
And then in between the Schwann cell, these gaps are called what? That's okay. Notes of Ron BA. And we're doing like a sampling one so that you can understand this one, this one, and therefore that one is also a note of Ron BA. And then here at the end, not yet. Well, Mom said she'd call you when it's time. Here, let's focus on this. Okay, and then here we have these these bulbs here at the ends. These are synaptic. <laughs> I needed slightly more paper. A synaptic knob. And now, and then these branches are terminal branches. So again, drawing a selection, one, two, three, and you can then. Now, what does terminal mean? Uh, um, it's like a terminal in the airport. It takes you to. Okay, but you go to a terminal at beginning and end of your flight. So it's where it's an end. So these are the ending branches, terminal branches. Okay. Mom, where are the notes? The notes of Rambier, they're between each swan cell. So they have, if they touch, if they touch, they can't, the, the signal can't go. So they have to be separate because the signal actually kind of jumps over the Schwann cell. Okay, and it actually goes faster. It's almost like by skipping or jumping, it can go faster. Like, has anyone ever read the, uh, the story, and I think it's Puss in Boots, has seven league boots. He can take seven leagues in a single step mm -hmm. and how fast he can move if he can do that. So think of these as like seven league boots. If you've got Schwann cells, instead of going walk, 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 it's boing, boing, boing through. Mm -hmm. That's what they're for. Okay, okay, so down here is the neuromuscular juncture. Is everyone okay so far? Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, and then this is still what? What is this? That is a Schwann. That's a neuron muscular junction. Yep, but this is a synaptic knob blown up. See, it's this part right here. Synaptic knob is a little bit here. Mm hmm. And then this gap right here. Remember, I said you have to have that gap? Things can't touch. It's amazing how many things in the human body cannot touch. Mm -hmm. Cleft. Yeah. 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 Oh, so like a cleft on a music sheet. Yes, uh, but in this case, cleft means a separation. So if you talk about like a cleft in the earth, we're talking about a crack or like a very narrow canyon. Like you get a lots of, of small clefts in the earth at, at some time. Yeah, you straight up. Okay. So, and then these green sacks. This is a very long word, and I still have to call my brother and see what all this means. But acetylcholine sacs. Just look at your word bank <laughs> for the for the uh, spelling. That's a good idea. Ricky, I've got questions. Shoot. I just wanted to show you while I was trying to figure out how to draw this and what does all of this mean. 
I found out there's different classes of nerves. So these are some forms that a nerve can take, a neuron can take. What we're drawing is called a multipolar nerve because there's multiple dendrites, multiple poles. Like we have a north pole and a south pole on the earth. There's multiple poles. This one's called a unipolar. Can you guess why? There's only one pole. Mom? There's only one dendrite. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Are there little things underneath the um the y-looking things? We're not labeling those. Oh, okay. Yes, dear. Yeah. It's on the diagram, but we're not labeling them. Whatever this one is. Okay. And then uh, this is called pyramidal. Can you see why this one yeah. might be Mom, called a pyramidal nerve? Mia? Sorry. No. Can you see why this one might be called pyramidal? Pyramidal. Play this one. Why might this nerve cell be called pyramidal? Because it's in the middle. Well, look at this. One, two, three. Oh, pyramid. Yep. And then this one's called unipolar. Sorry. This one's bipolar. One, two. This one's called unipolar. You know how you can feel hot, cold, pain, all your sensory, this is the nerve that does it. It feels it here and sends it that way. And then this one, these are found, these are called, <laughs> this one's called, called Perkinje. These are in your cerebellum. These are in your cerebrum. You don't have to do anything with this. I just thought these were interesting, all the different shapes that nerves could take. And so by doing this sort of color coding, I was able to understand a lot more. Okay, so what sort of things? How are we feeling? Good. Is this something you feel up to drawing this week? Sure. Good. Okay, we can go fetch the others and start on our model of a nerve cell.